So this video will be talking and breaking down how do you create a company that self grows and self improves without needing you there. This is something that I learned from studying how Google works and we'll be breaking down the exact process of what they do in order to create this self growing company. Let's get right into the video. So one, you want to let team members improve themselves. You want them to go ahead and answer these three questions. One, the one thing that excites me about this particular opportunity is, next is, I confess, the one thing I'm not so excited with this particular opportunity is, lastly, on this project, I'd really like to get better at dot dot dot. And if you go ahead and get them to do this, you'll be able to see what they excelled at, what they want to do, what they don't want to do. Maybe you could go ahead and find someone that actually likes doing what that other person doesn't like to do. I mean, basically swap roles, now everyone's doing what they love to do. And thirdly, you go ahead and get them to be self-aware and tell you what they want to get better at. And then once you're able to get them to a point where they're self-aware of what they want to get better at, then that starts a process of them self-improving. Next is you want to create a process called red teaming. Basically, create a red team that comes up with ideas to disrupt or defeat your proposed plan. And the point of this is you won't always be there to catch the holes and problems within a proposed plan. And eventually you'll need someone else to do that for you. And that's why you want to go ahead and create this process called red teaming where your own employees can cr critique other employees process. And you basically want to create a red team of people who are not wedded to the existing plan in any way. Give them the freedom to think in new ways that the planners might not have anticipated. Next, this is very important. Letting team members improve you. You always want to have questions for your employees as a leader. And you want to ask them, what is one thing that I currently do that you like me to continue to do? What is one thing I don't do frequently enough that you think I should do more often? And what is one thing I can do more effective? These are great questions. I'm always trying to learn from my employees and get feedback on how I can be a better leader. And that's sort of where you'll get the best answers. You can't really learn a book on leadership. If you go ahead and just go directly to employees and be like, hey, what can I do better as a leader? You're gonna get the best answers in real time. And this is really, really important. But if you do this too much, I found that then employees will think you're too soft and they'll you know, take advantage of that. So you definitely wanna find a fine line based on my experience because when I sort of give them too much sort of freedom and ask them too much questions and let them critique me too much, they get a bit cocky. Their ego grows a bit. Next is you want to let your team members self-train. So for example, the New Zealand All Blacks rugby team, their players lead several practice sessions each week with little input from the coaches. The best teams tend to be the ones that wasn't too involved, that the coaches weren't needed to be involved with, especially when it came to training. Literally, the coaches would be able to disappear and the team would not rely on them at all. By doing this, they get better at figuring out what is needed to do themselves than the coach could ever do. So what I should do more often is, one, go on rural holidays and say, hey, seven days, don't contact me, figure things out. Train them to figure things out, but two, Maybe I should create like a week, like a period of each month where the team, no one in the team can contact me for help. But the reason I hate that idea is because then after the seven days, I'll have a backlog of things. But I think that's not too bad of an idea. Simulate days slash week. Really good training exercise. I wanna do that more often. Basically tell my team, hey, these three days, figure things out on your own and don't have me come back to a backload of issues to clear. Next is put the power in the employees rather than the managers. You wanna remove creative power from managers and place them onto the employees because the employees are the creative people. It doesn't make sense, it's weird. The reason why corporates get too corporate-y because all the creative power goes into these managers who aren't creative or who aren't creatives. Employees are responsible for coming up with their own ideas and pitching them rather than them being assigned by the managers. People on the ground floor, they should be the ones coming up with ideas because they're the ones that are doing that task. And next is managers should support the employees 
the teams as they undertake the painful journey of building and executing ideas. That's where the manager comes in, helps them with execution and building on the idea. Lastly, pretty important, give credit to team members. Whenever there's an implementable idea, immediately announce a change on the sort of ship's intercom or like your company group chat, giving credit to the idea of the originator. Whenever someone comes up with, hey, that's a great suggestion, John. Hey, I heard from Mary, she suggested this. I think it's a good idea. You should go ahead and apply this idea I got from Mary. Give credit whenever you can. Employees love credit. And that's sort of the reason why a lot of people leave companies because they're not getting recognized and they're not getting credit for their hard work. So I'm always trying to remember what an employee is doing um, and giving them credit. Now, obviously this can go the bad way where they're getting too, again, egotistical and they think they're playing a bigger role than they are actually playing. As a result, they would go ahead and start thinking they could go ahead and push you for raises or think they're special and they're the golden employee. So that's a downside. So you do wanna find a good balance, but always give credit when possible. So yeah, that's how you can go ahead and create a company that can grow on its own. Hope you guys got value from this video. Let's go ahead and announce last bit's winners for thousand dollars worth of courses, a consultant course with me. The winners see if you guys want to qualify or to do the shop, comment below, follow me on Instagram, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, like this video, and I'll be picking the best comment every single video. Hope you guys have an amazing day. See you guys tomorrow. Peace.